Hello, you over there, you a YouTuber? I recognise you off the YouTubes. This is the YouTuber only zone. Only YouTubers. Your husband, he's quite annoying, isn't he? Look at that! Absolutely gorgeous, aren't they? Just incredible that that started from a seed. So we're going to harvest these baby blue hubbards and we've tried one already, cut it open and it's really fleshy inside, it tastes very nutty and I think because of the very hot summer these have developed really quickly and you can see the leaves have all died off so I would imagine you can um, harvest them now and store them so all kind of pumpkin squashes they can keep for several months and what we're going to do is store them in a cupboard and that will allow the flavour to uh, mature and they will taste better in a few months time. Uh, we'll save the biggest till last. No, do you want to hold it? Oh, do I want to hold it? Okay. Oh! That's really heavy. I don't know how we're going to cut it. Any knife companies out there? Any great big knife companies? This one looks absolutely gorgeous. Look at that one. Beautiful. Colour on these are much better than last year. I think because we planted them earlier this year. Also what we did was we cut off a lot of the leaves, a lot of the additional flowers, just to put a lot of the energy into a few good ones, rather than having lots and lots of little ones. So that's something we learnt in the last year. In the supermarket, these will sell for about three euros each if you're getting one that's um, organic. So um, yeah, each one you're saving money if you're going to buy them. I'm looking forward to tasting these and trying these because I feel like they're going to taste really good. I can tell from the colour, the shape. Let us know if you've been growing squash like us this year, and uh, what are your favourite varieties? Leave them in the comments below and share with everyone. Good quality stuff. These pieces that I've got here, I threw and made almost three years ago. In fact, it is three years ago. And I packaged them up, brought them to France with the intention of glazing and firing and uh, and getting right into it. But obviously, with the this place that you've seen in some of our videos, is is quite quite a big place, and uh, it requires a lot of maintenance. And then you've got two kids, and you kind of get into it and you and you just can't stop and this is this is the new this is the new project this is a new hobby but this for me is really important it's something i fell in love with in the end of 2018 2019 i just i just threw myself into it i couldn't couldn't stop making things and um i have a surplus of stuff and some of them are very good i'm very proud of some of these shapes and forms and they're very light but they've been just sitting on a shelf for as I said, two years. And these are glazes, kind of the, the paint. They're not paint, they're kind of raw materials mixed with water and you dip them and you can brush stroke them and all of that and then they get fired again and that glaze adheres to this. Um, but yeah, so what I'm gonna do is do the glazing. I need to just check the glazes in this book and we'll crack on.
In our last video I didn't really say but I was taking a lot of the leaf mold, a lot of the earth, basically leaves that are just dried and turned to compost from the little woodland that's just down there. Daddy, I took a few Daddy, wheelbarrows. Flower bed. Yeah what we're doing exactly is we're putting it on the flower beds so we're introducing some good minerals, nutrients for this flower bed which has been a little bit neglected and this bed will hopefully be an explosion of colour next spring. Can I get confirmation on that? Explosion of colour! I absolutely love this glaze that I made um, and in fact it's the best glaze out of all of them. It has a really lovely kind of mottled green with some kind of burnt dark bits and sometimes this one has come up much much darker and much blacker. I think it still works. Some of the other pieces have worked okay. This bowl is really nice. I'm very happy with that and the plate. The glaze hasn't really kind of dripped as I had hoped on some of these but they, they're still absolutely fine. I think what the problem was with some of these glazes is they needed to be sieved because they've been sat there for a while so mixing and sieving is really important. I think that's why there's problems on this one where the blue has peeled off. I don't think it was anything to do with the kiln or the heating. I think it's how I applied this glaze and it didn't adhere properly and that's mainly because I hadn't mixed it which is a shame because a few of these pieces probably aren't saleable but I can certainly keep them. So there's something quite incredible about making your own glaze and it's yours. It's, it, it's your own thing that you've made. Um, it's not something you can buy at a supplier, it's not a ready-made glaze, it's something you've created that has your stamp on it and it's going to be very hard for other people to recreate it unless you share that recipe. And maybe I'll do that in the future as I get more um, advanced with, with making my own glazes, but absolutely love this. All of these items will be available on our shop, studiopoirier.com. Click this link right here and it will take you there where you can sign up to get 10% off your first purchase. We'll see you all next week. Bye.